This week on Common Grounds TV. We achieve liftoff with Liaco Dertillis of Red Rocket Coffee. We go to Leslieville to find some of the country's top cafes. And we head to the Canadian National Barista Championships. seeing some of the more significant buildings here, some great architecture. Nick particularly likes it because everything is symmetrical, as you've probably noticed. Uh, we're only partly disappointed because there's a hell of a lot of construction going on right now. We had no idea until we got here and uh, a whole bunch of it's covered up with tarps and uh, scaffolding. So I guess we'll get a look at what we can. The songs playing here at Parliament Hill are totally random. I've heard It's a Small World After All, Some Kind of Christmas Carol, and Katy Perry's Teenage Dream. Krupps hosts the National Barista Championship combined with the Coffee and Tea Show that showcases the latest state-of-the-art equipment used in the coffee industry. Competitors from all over Canada train with previous competition winners to try and become the best. Entrants come from all manner of cafes, be it small chains or one-off independents. This year's competition was won by Rob Kettner of Fernwood Coffee in Victoria, BC. For reasons unexplained, much of Toronto's best coffee can be found in Leslieville. Tearo, Mercury, Red Rocket and Tango Palace all reside within a 15 minute walk. coffee addicts out there. Welcome to Toronto and this is your Toronto Coffee Tour. When I started my business partner and myself, uh, my business partner is Pan McDonald. Uh, we met in chef school uh, and we started our own business right after graduating. We were uh, recipe developers, food writers and food stylists. Mm -hmm. We started uh, a shortbread business uh, we went to a couple of food shows. We got an account with Pusaterius, which is a gourmet food shop here in Toronto. Uh, when we got that account, we decided to move our kitchens into Toronto. And for better or for worse, we put a coffee shop in the front because you never know how the shortbread business is going to go. And uh, it just took off after that. So we don't do the wholesale shortbreads anymore. We just concentrate on the uh, 
coffee shop, and so you know we 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 come from a background of restaurateurs and uh, foodies, and we kind of fell into the coffee world, and we're quite happy where we are. For sure. Well, we sampled the shortbread earlier, and it was outstanding. Sort of your signature snack, I would guess. So, what would you say is your signature coffee? Signature coffee. We have our own private labels. Uh, Reunion Island, which is Canada's largest importer of fair trade and organic coffee. Uh, they are just out in uh, Oakville, so we can all say it's locally roasted. They uh, worked with us and uh, they helped us develop our. Uh, we have Liftoff, which is our light roast, and Deep Space, which is our dark roast. Nice. We are in the process of working uh, a French roast uh, called Dark Matter. Uh, our decaf is called Zero Gravity, and we're also working on an espresso blend, which is going to be called, uh, hopefully, if I get my own way, it's going to be called Major Tom. Nice. A lot of really smart customers at the other store. Yeah. Uh, a lot of architects, designers, uh, you know, uh, craftsmen come in. Um, I used one of the architects that sort of designed this space. Originally, the bar was supposed to be down there. Okay. But because of to get a proper barrier-free access, we couldn't do it. Right. Uh, our architect decided, and we gave them a lot of leeways to do whatever they wanted uh, nice. creatively. We love clients like you. And uh, he came up with the idea of using that concrete pillar, which was a, t a challenge, to use it as a, as a positive element. So he wrapped the bar around the concrete. And what about the name itself? Where did the name Red Rocket come from? Red Rocket, when we decided to move our kitchens into Toronto, we found a spot. Uh, everything was going great. We are opening like in about a week's time and we still did not have a name. We came, we were coming up with all kind of weird names. Uh, Arcs, uh, it was just, none of the names was working out. They were filming uh, right across the street from our first location are the streetcar yards, the TTC uh, streetcar yards. Um, they were filming Hairspray uh, and apparently on one of the uh, streetcars in Hairspray is 17 Baltimore. So I was talking to Pam and it's like, hey, why don't we call ourselves 17 Baltimore? And she's like, that's a stupid name. Where'd you come up with that? And I said, from the Red Rocket across the street. I probably should say that our streetcars here in Toronto are called Red Rockets, the older ones. They're known as Red Rockets. So, and as soon as I said Red Rocket, it kind of clicked. You know, at, uh, hey, Red Rocket Coffee. So that's uh, what we called it. Most of the cafes we drop in, so you have kind of a signature drink. Does the Red Rocket have one? Okay, in terms of signature drinks, we actually do have a signature drink. It's called the Red Rocket. Okay. In a medium sized cup, there's one and a half pumps of chocolate, three shots of espresso, topped off with dark roast coffee. It's a pretty strong, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's potent. Wow. And it kind of sneaks up on you because the sweetness of the chocolate downplays the strength of the espresso. Of course. But the bitterness of the espresso, the good bitterness of the espresso, the, the strength of coffee yeah. downplays the, uh, the sweetness. Of chocolate. Everything's balanced. And uh, it's very balanced. A lot of people really like it. We have another drink that we're very proud of. Uh, we call it the Miami Vice. Uh, the person who actually named it was Adam Pesci, who is actually part of uh, Reunion Island Coffee that I mentioned earlier. He, uh, we didn't know what to uh, name it. Uh, we, there's a drink called a Cubano, an espresso Cubano. I think, when, for sure, when we started making them, we were the only people in Toronto who made them. Uh, I don't know if we still are. I think there are other coffee shops who make Cubanos now. And basically what it is, is in the portafilter, which is that little filter that you put the espresso in before you put it into the grouping, yep. to brew, we put a little bit of brown sugar, we put a layer of brown sugar before the espresso. So the espresso brews the sugar. It's nice, the sugar is caramelized, so you get a, a, a slightly caramelized flavor into the coffee, mm -hmm. but it also tones down the espresso as well. That's an espresso cubano. When we turn that into an Americano, we decided to call it the Miami Vice. So that's one of our signature drinks as well. We, there's a fan base of people. We, we like Christopher Walken. And really, um, I mean. we have uh, photocopies of his head. We hide the head around every uh, once in a while. If you find the Christopher Walken head, next time you come in, coffee's half price. Nice. If you give us the head, you have to give it back to us. Next week on Common Grounds TV, we check out Niagara Falls for no apparent reason. The husband and wife team at Tearo show us their beautifully designed cafe in the heart of Toronto. And we get hit by a Toronto cab.